Okay, this delivery just came from OWC. I think that stands for Other World Computing. Uh, MacSales, I think, .com is another URL they use, but um, you Google OWC, you're going to find them. Yeah, and it, yeah, it just says right here, MacSales.com. So this is my Chris Reeves Sabenza knife. I love it. Best pocket knife made. And they're made in, let's see, Idaho. All right, so we'll open this package. This is an upgrade I've been planning for a while. And it's going to be SSD drives. This is, let me see if you can see that. Um, yeah, I guess you can see it. This is the um, super slim uh, housing to put my optical drive in. I'm going to take the optical drive out of my MacBook Pro and I'm going to put a second hard drive in it, which is actually going to be the boot, boot drive. It's going to be an SSD. And from what I've gathered, it doesn't matter if you put the SSD drive there or where the original hard drive is, it's the same access speeds. So, um, so I'm going to replace the optical drive in the MacBook Pro with an SSD and then I'm going to take the optical drive and put it in this housing. So that'll be one of the last things I do. Okay, and then here is... And there are probably cheaper places to buy some of this stuff, but I use their, their uh, backup program, uh, Carbon Copy Cloner, so I like to give these guys the business. This looks like the adapter for, huh, not sure which adapter that is. Let's see here. Mount bracket. Oh, this is for, the, for putting it in the Mac Pro, I guess. So this is, I guess, for putting it in the optical drive. So, so the other upgrade I'm going to do, I'm going to do two upgrades. I'm going to put an SSD in my um, MacBook Pro, and I'm going to put an SSD in my Mac Pro. And this is for the Mac Pro. So we'll set this aside for now, because that's last. Do that after I finish the MacBook Pro. It's good they give the instructions with it. Now I got two of these, let's see if you can see that the reflection is like, I got two of these, um, they should both be 240 gigabyte um, SSD drive, it says designed and built in the USA, Mercury Electro 3G, because of the age of my unit, two years old, it, it doesn't benefit to have the 6G one I think, yeah it says 240 gigabyte right there. So that's one of the drives. <clears throat> this is RAM. I'm going to also upgrade the RAM on my MacBook Pro from 4 gigs to 8. 8 the max. And that's dirt cheap now, the RAM. So while I had it open, I figured I'd do that upgrade. Here's the other hard drive. And they even give you a toolkit. Wow. I've already got tools, but they, that's nice that they give you a little toolkit. Well, it's in, in, included in one of the kits that I bought, I guess. Don't give it to you, but they include it. Okay. And then here is the adapter for putting the putting in the optical bay on the um oh that feels very well made on the MacBook Pro. So this will be one of the first items that I use. So I'm gonna set that over here for now. And the tools here. I'll also use the RAM and one of the hard drives. So I'll put the other hard drive over here out of the way. And I'll pause this recording and we'll get the MacBook Pro out here. Okay, it's nice that they give you the, the little screwdriver. It is the correct size and it would work fine. But I have a kit with a nicer screwdriver and this is a double O size Phillips. And this one has the, the swivel on it, so it's just going to be quicker for me to get the screws out. So I'm going to take all the screws out, and you do want to use the correct size Phillips because you can strip these screws if you're not careful. So I'm going to take all the screws out. There are, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten screws, it looks like. Some of these are different sizes, so you want to keep them together. 
I'm going to put them where they go. So I'm going to pause this and take all the screws out and take the back off. Okay, on mine, let me point this down just a hair more. There. On mine, only three of the screws were longer. These three right here that go across where the black is. And this one in the corner was a short one. So that's interesting that this one was long and this one was short. I don't know if that's the same on everybody's. But I've got them all lined up with where they came out of. All the rest of the screws seem to be the same size. So let's see. Just lift this off. There it comes off very easily. Lightweight piece of aluminum. Now we see the guts of the computer. Now the first thing I'm going to do before I forget to do it is I'm going to put the new RAM in. So... Let's see here. Yeah, just pop those little clips and it just pops right out. And there's humidity here today. It's rainy, so I'm not worried about static electricity. Okay, I just had to wiggle that one a little more to get it out. Now, let's get these OWC modules. Okay, so I was just interrupted by a phone call. So now let's put these two new SIMs in. Make sure we line them up correctly. This one's going in the bottom slot. Just goes right in. And the new ones go in a lot easier than the old ones came out. Especially the second old one kind of fought me a little bit. Good. Alright, so now we've gone from 4 gigs of RAM to 8 gigs of RAM. Now I've got to take out a bunch of screws and take out this um, optical drive. So it looks like the first thing I need to do is I gave it a little pry bar. I guess that's to pry this up. Yeah. Okay, so that just unclips because I want that to be out of the way. And this one, unclip this one. Okay, good. Now I understand that there's a screw that's a little bit hidden under here. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to get to that hidden screw first. It's just a Phillips. Okay, so once you have the screws loose around the optical drive, you have to take the two screws out of this. This is like a speaker assembly or something. To get that loose, that will not be removed. But once we get the screws loose from the drive, we should be able to lift the drive out. Lifting it out now. And here we go, it's coming out. And the screws are still with it. I'm going to set these aside. There's two screws there that go with it. And then there's one other screw in here that I need to get out. I might need to dump it out. I hate to do that, but yep, there it came out. Perfect. Got lucky there. It slid right out. So I got all three screws that held the drive in out. One is here, the one that's tricky to get to, right here. And then the other two are here and here. Then this will stay in. This will get screwed back in once I put the, the kit in. So now I've got to get the, the sled ready to put the drive in. And then we're almost done. I want to show you, let's see if this will focus in on this. Hopefully it is. Um, one thing I want to show you on this is you have to take off this small piece here and we're going to use this piece here also for the, to use for the new adapter to hook up the drive. So I'll do that now. Taking these two screws out, catching them in my hand, because I'll use them to put this little piece on here and it's going to go just like this the trickiest part is these tiny little screws you're working with but take your time and I think you'll get it
I can do it, anybody can do it, because I can't see a thing. Okay. So here we go. I help if I had a little more light. Okay, so that metal bracket's on there. That'll screw into there. Now I got to put the little jumper. So this here, just ease this out. And plugs into here. Yep, that goes in very nicely. And that'll plug back in. So now I can put this in here. Well, actually, it's got to go on this side first, I guess. That up a little bit. Yeah, and lift this up. There, it just snaps right in. Oh, got to fish this underneath here. Choose this little pry thing to get that out of the way. So get that screw underneath. Okay. Make sure I'm still recording all that. Yeah, still recorded all that. Okay, so it's getting lined up here. Yeah, boy, that's perfectly lined up. Now, see if I can slip my drive in before I bolt it down. Should be able to slip the drive in there. I'm hoping, 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 hoping. These are both 240 gigabytes, so it doesn't matter which one I use. Yep, this will line up perfect with that. I guess I could have put the drive in first, but there, snaps right in. Perfect. It's not going anywhere. Now I've got to make sure to hook these two jumpers, these two runners up. Yep, that snapped in perfect. That snapped in perfect. Now I've got a bunch of screws to put back in. So first of all, the two speaker screws. Right here. I'm sorry if this is a long video, but I would rather you see as much as possible if you're going to do this yourself and then, then like cut out a lot of stuff. Okay, so those two screws are in. Now I need to put the other screws in. These are all black, by the way, the ones that go inside the unit here. Um, so that'll help you. How am I going to get this screw in there? Very carefully. Please go in. Get this lined up with the hole. It's not quite lined up. There we go. Perfect. That's a tricky one. All right. Now, okay, I've got everything back in and everything's all snugged down. Just as an extra precaution, I put a little bit of duct tape here to, to make the drive nice and solid and so that it won't vibrate or anything. These don't vibrate anyway, but just to tape it to the, to the housing here and just snug that up a little bit. Probably not necessary, but I put it there. Everything's good. So now I'm going to put the back back on. Underside of this computer needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to start here with the longer screws. Just get that started just a little bit. And I'll go around and snug them all down. Okay, so you probably don't need to see me put all the screws back in. 
Right, just torquing down the last screws here. Make sure they're all snug and not over torquing them. Let's go all the way around it one more time here. Make sure they're all snug. Hopefully, this will be the last time the back is ever off this computer. All right, so I'm going to turn it over. And I'm actually going to boot it one time just to see, make sure it boots up okay. And then, then after I do this boot, this is booting on the old drive, of course. I'm going to use Carbon Copy Cloner to clone over. I've already did a fresh install of, of Mountain Lion on here, so I'm going to use Carbon Copy Cloner to copy all the files over onto the new SSD, and then I'm going to set it up to boot to the SSD, and then we'll see how much faster it boots. This has been taking a little over a minute, about a minute and five seconds to boot um, totally up with the old hard drive. Um, so I'll do a test once I've got everything on the SSD and see how that does. Um, but in the meantime, um, I have to uh, go in here and just make sure that it sees the drive and all of that. And, um, and so then I'll do that procedure and then we'll do a test and we'll see how fast this thing boots up. Okay, while Carbon Copy Cloner is doing its thing in the other room, which is copying over all the files on the original hard drive in the MacBook Pro, copying them over to the SSD so that I can then boot from the SSD, because my plan is to have all my programs and all on the SSD and then use the other drive as data storage and backup. Um, it would be nice to have two drives in that machine. Now, in the meantime, we've got to put the, the, um, the, the sold drive, optical drive, in this housing. So, see if I can figure out how to do that without reading any instructions. Looks like there's something supposed to go in here. There's a third foot missing. And I think that's supposed to be a screw or something and I don't see it here. Hmm. It's like it's missing. I hope I'm not hope I'm not missing a fastener. Let's see what it says here about this. Yeah, it's definitely showing four screws here. Huh. I don't see the hardware. Okay, so that slides off. Oh, hardware is taped inside. Thank goodness. Had me scared there, OWC. So here's the hardware and the little rubber thingy. All right, so we're making progress now. So, it looks like what we do, sit down here, let me see if I've got that framed in the shot. Yeah, you can see everything. Um, Oh, I guess this connects over here. Small one there, small one there, okay. So this must connect like so. Okay, that's made a good connection. And that fits in there nicely, very nicely. Now, this is where the other screw comes into, I guess, right there. So that must go like this. It's 
so oh, what was that? Oh, it was my ups back up screaming. Okay. So this goes like this. There we go. Slides in pretty tight. Why are there extra screws here? Was I missing something? Was that supposed to screw in? On the back side, you see three cutouts for screws to be inserted in the optical drive me mechanism. Oh, ah, I skipped a step here, guys. Helps to read the instructions and not have extra parts late, uh, left over. Oh, I see. So this is interesting. You've got to take a little bit of tape off. So let's unplug this. This is interesting. There's, um, this is why I didn't see the screws. There's a little bit of tape on here hiding the, the screw holes. So you've got to pull that out of the way to uncover these two screw holes on the side. So there's this like foil tape that is hiding the screw holes in the drive, in the optical drive. Tricky, eh? And you see there's supposed to be three of these. Where's the third one? I swear I only see two. Two. On the back side you will see three cutouts for screws to be inserted. Oh, right here in the end. Okay, so that's the third one. All right, so now can plug this back in. Okay, so that's in. Now I get these screws out. So again, if this is going a little bit long, but um, it is what it is. All right, so same screwdriver looks like will work. Okay, so this is the last of the three screws going in. Okay, so that's pretty daggone secure. I won't use this thing very often anyway. This, who uses optical drives anymore? Okay, so this lined up. That's right, yeah. There we go. Snaps into place. Now you put this last screw in here to hold this, theoretically. Snug that down without stripping it. Then we got the foot here to put on. A little foot goes in here. That's it. Super Slim Drive is ready. Then FYI, read the instructions and this does not come with the power supply. Most computers you can just hook it up with the USB and, and it should work fine. Um, so I'll test it with just the USB, but they said optionally, if your computer doesn't have enough USB power, you can buy a power supply. Probably won't need that. Okay, while I'm waiting for Carbon Copy Cloner to copy everything over um, from the spinning hard drive, the original hard drive in the MacBook Pro to the SSD and waiting to test that, I'm going to assemble the, the rig to put the next SSD in the optical drive on my computer. So, looks like there's a couple of options here to use this. Yeah, it looks like you can even put two SSDs in, in this bracket setup. So that'd be good for future expansion. Okay, so let me just pause this. I'm gonna assemble this and then I'll show you what I did. Okay, so I'm mounting, put a different size screw head in, bigger screw head now on my screwdriver. I'm mounting the SSD onto this bracket. 
with four supplied screws. Doing it just like they show it in the picture. Okay, and then I've got to put these spacers on. I guess these are what make it become a five and whatever size, you know, an optical drive is. Um, so, looks like Okay, so I will mount this next. Yeah, about like that. All right, I'll mount that next. Okay, I've got this bracket assembled. You can see the hard drive is there. Hope you can see that. And um, got it all assembled, ready to go in the Mac Pro. So the next thing we'll do is install this in the second optical drive in the Mac Pro. I will not have to remove the optical drive that's in there because there's two bays. There's two optical drive bays. So this should go in there, hook up, should be good to go. So we'll see that in a little while. Okay, I've completed all the work on the Mac Pro, which means that I used Carbon Copy Cloner to copy the um, standard hard drive content over to the SSD. Then I've set it up so that it boots on the SSD. So I'm going to shut the computer down here. And then I'm going to start it. We'll see how quick it starts up. Okay, so I'm going to say right now we started it at 15 seconds after. We get the chime at 20 seconds after. 25 seconds after we got the Apple logo. And we're booted up. So it took about you know, 15 seconds or so for the boot and for, and it looks like text expander launched. I've got different things that are in startup, so I still got to clean up some of that stuff, but um, much faster. It took about a minute on average for it to start before. Um, so let me launch Final Cut Pro, and I've not launched this yet on this drive, so here it's launching, Windows up, restoring window, boom. Just like that, a few seconds, much, much faster than before. Um, and more importantly, everything's very much switch-like. You know, when you're doing things, it's boom, 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 which I like. I don't like the computer to slow me down because the other problem that you run into with that is you think that something's not working right, so you click again and you start really giving the computer, you know, too many signals um, because you're you're thinking that something's wrong, but this is like switch-like. I mean, as soon as I do things, boom, it, 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 it acts, which I really like. This is going to save me money in the long run because I can probably use this computer for a couple of extra years now because of the performance boost I'm getting here. I won't have to upgrade it as soon. Again, I upgraded it to 8 gigs of RAM from 4, and I put the SSD in, so now it has two hard drives in it. It's got the SSD here. Um, which, let's see if I go to get info. Um, I've got 190 gigabytes free on that. Again, I did a clean install recently, so I don't have a lot of junk on here. And get info on the second hard drive. I formatted it. I've got 248 gigabytes available on it so that I can put a bunch of movies and stuff on there. And I can use the SSD for all my work. This is really going to make this a nice uh, machine when I'm out and about. But when I do use it, it, I really like it. So, and this is going to make me like it even that much more. All right, so on to the Mac Pro machine next. <clears throat> I probably should have done this the other day when I had this disconnected and had the um, Apple Care folks were here and they replaced the, um, the uh, 
video card went bad. Okay, so you can kind of see that. So let me open. There's a little lever here, and this just opens up. These are beautiful machines, absolutely gorgeous. Now all I need to do is mount the drive in here. Here it is. And I'll want it like this. And this is perfectly sized to go in here. Just got to get it lined up to the holes. Okay, so you do have to pick the correct screws. I've got the correct screws now and I'm putting these all in. And a little tricky to get this to line up completely right. Yeah, some of these are a finer thread. So they give you different various screws. I don't know. They give you more hardware than you need, which actually, in my way of thinking, causes more problems. Okay, so that's mounted in there. Okay, um, I have installed a new version of Mac uh, OS X Mountain Lion. Um, I have installed the major programs that I use, like iWork. Um, a lot of them I could download right from the App Store. For example, Final Cut Pro, ScreenFlow, Moom, Evernote. All of those, I just go to the App Store, click on them, download them, install them, piece of cake. Um, there's a few programs like Aperture that I bought before the App Store had it, so I had to put that in using a disk. And um, iWork, um, I used putting in a disk. Uh, but everything else I downloaded from the App Store. And um, I'm just updating some things, some settings and so forth. Again, I'm doing a, a clean install here just because I want to give this computer like a whole fresh new start. It's two years old, so I figured I'd do a fresh install and install whatever programs I use. This is also a good chance to get rid of any programs that I'd installed previously that I just don't use anymore. So kind of get everything cleaned up and updated. And so far, it seems to be very fast. Everything's very switch-like. The SSD has, has really sped things up. Again, it's a pretty powerful machine anyway. It's a 6-core, 3.33 gigahertz uh, machine with 24 gigs of RAM. So the choke point was the spinning hard drive. So now I've got a solid-state hard drive with my operating system and all my programs. And I've still got four hard drives in there for storing data, videos, photos, all that sort of thing. And I will slowly one at a time, update those to SSD as well. So um, my next update will be when I'm actually editing this video on the new machine, and I'll uh, put some comments in there as far as how much this speeds up that editing process with Final Cut Pro version 10. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this whole rundown on updating these two machines. Thanks for listening.